Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Be on watch, for you know not when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or in the morning. Be on watch, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy, immortal one, have mercy upon us. On this last Sunday of Advent, we celebrate the peace of Christ. As Christ spoke, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with others we meet this week. Let the light of Christ's love burn brightly in us today and always. be with you. Let us pray. Shepherd of Israel, your only son, Jesus, who was also Mary's son and who was put under the care of Joseph, help us to hold him as more than just a dream in our hearts. With the apostles, prophets, and saints, restore us and lead us in the way of peace so that we may bear your promise into the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today's lesson is one of many New Old Testament prophecies understood by the church as predictions of the Messiah. Originally, it was no more than a promise to Ahaz, the king of Judah, in the late seventh century BC, that God would deliver his kingdom from imminent danger of invasion. Today's gospel lesson from Matthew gave the early Christian church the popular interpretation that the sign of a young woman bearing a son to be named Emmanuel was a specific reference to the birth of Jesus. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask a sign from the Lord your God, make it as deep as a grave or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I won't ask, I won't test the Lord. Then Isaiah said, listen, house of David, Isn't it enough for you to be tiresome for people that you're also tiresome before my God? Therefore, the Lord will give you a sign. The young woman is pregnant and is about to give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. He will eat butter and honey and learn to reject evil and choose good. Before the boy learns to reject evil and choose good, The land of the two kings you dread will be abandoned. The word of the Lord. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh, Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be in despite the prayers of your people? 
You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. Restore us, O God of hosts. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome. From Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for God's good news. God promised this good news about his son ahead of time through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. His son was descended from David. He was publicly identified as God's son with power through his resurrection from the dead, which was based on the spirit of holiness. This son is Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received God's grace and our appointment to be apostles. This was to bring all Gentiles to faithful obedience for his name's sake. You who are called by Jesus Christ are also included among these Gentiles. To those in Rome who are dearly beloved by God and called to be God's people, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph being a righteous man, unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart to be always acceptable to you. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we have this one from Matthew. Uh, Matthew and Luke are the only ones who tell us about the birth narrative of Jesus, of how it all came to be. Uh, Mark and John talked about Jesus really starting at his baptism and heading forward. And so I'm glad that we have these two, Matthew and Luke, to tell us about this. Um, on Saturday, you're going to hear from Luke, and you're going to hear from Luke more than, uh, than Matthew on this. Uh, Matthew takes the perspective of Jesus' birth through the eyes and the life of Joseph. And Luke gives us the identity of Jesus' birth through the life of Mary. Uh, there was a time, the year 327, uh, where the church could have taken these four Gospels and, and the Gospel of Thomas, and they could have uh, wound them together and put them as one story. But they decided, thankfully, to keep these voices separate so we could spend time with each one. And so we're in the year of Matthew, and so we're going to spend time with Matthew's Gospel. Uh, I'm going to spend part of this time with you today to try to get you in the frame of mind or reference that they had in the first century. When Matthew had written this, if you're part of his community or if you're a part of the community that had received his gospel, there are some things that you understand that we don't anymore. And so I want to highlight some of that with you. So if you're, if you're ready to put your thinking caps on and head back into the first century, uh, let go of all the justice and things you know about for men and women. It's going to get real rough. You ready? And, and I, mean, I mean really, really rough. You probably should buckle in, maybe put a helmet on, because here it comes. Uh, when Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant, he knew it was not his. I'm not going to tell you how. I think you know. Uh, he knew it was not his. He had two, cho- two options. Option number one, the one that is used most, that historians have found the most record of. He would drag her into court. He would testify that this is not his child. They then would take her forcibly from the court out to the square where the town would meet. The elders of the men of the town would grab bricks or stones, hit her on the head until she was dead. And then parents with children who were not yet of marrying age would take some of the blood, bring it home, and tell their children, this is what happens to you. That's option number one, the most common option. You want to hear option number two? Option number two, he can dismiss her quietly. He can tell her, you go your way, I'll go my way. Her path is really rough, raising a single child and all that. His path also is rough. There's something else about Joseph that everyone in the first century knew that we have lost. Um, So if I asked you this question, uh, what is Joseph's occupation? If I said, what is Joseph's occupation, what would you tell me? Carpenter, right. And not the band in the 70s, not that carpenter, but it's an actual guy that, does anybody know the carpenters? Did I just step out? Okay, so um, (laughs) the type that works and he makes bowls and he makes a chair and that type of stuff, I want you to let go of all of that. Uh, He is a carpenter, but carpenters in our day and time would be known as civil engineers. He knew how to make rope. He knew how to make pulleys. He knew how to use geometry. So imagine that this was a building that Joseph would build. He would have the masons come in and build uh, the walls around it, but his job is to know how to cut down trees, how to get them to go upright, how to use pulleys to pull them up, and then how to secure them. And so any of the images you have of Joseph being an old man kind of bent over and he's whittling on like a fork, no, no. He is an engineer. He's an engineer that does this. He's in great demand. There aren't many of him around. He has people working under him to do all of the rest of the work, uh, but it took a lot of work for him to become a carpenter. And so in John's gospel, you hear about Jesus walking into the temple and he has a rope and he clears the floor with the rope, uses it like a whip, Uh, he probably learned how to make that rope because of his dad, Joseph. He probably learned how to do it. Uh, Anybody want to know how long it takes to make a rope back in the first century? Any guess? Three days. 
Just let that sit in for a bit. Uh, it's just interesting, the number of three, three days, and how we use all that. So Joseph had that. Joseph also had what we would call a book of business. He had clients. He had people that would come to him and ask him to bid out and then to work on various projects. And some of those clients were the Roman Empire. Another one of his clients was uh, King Herod, right? Other clients were other businesses and things going on. And so Joseph is in the business of telling people no, of seeing various options and of asking, can you do this, can you do that, and I can't do that, I don't have the time for this. And so if somebody came to him and said, I'd like you to make a table, you know, I don't have time, right? Joseph is good at discerning and letting things go and then following a particular path. He's an engineer. Does that help you with your understanding of getting into Joseph's head for a bit, right? Dismissing her quietly, option two, means he walks away from his business. He can't do business anymore in that town. The shame that he would have placed upon him, people would no longer be talking to him, they would be talking about him. The option to save his business would be option number one. He chose option number two. That also means he takes his charts, he takes his geometry stuff, he packages it up, and he goes to another town, and he starts over. That was option number two. That was the option he chose. I'm going to let go of my contacts, I'm going to let go of my book of business, I'm going to hand this over to some other apprentice, I'm going to go to a different town. So when, when Luke refers to him as a righteous man, which is better translated generous, you now understand the generosity of Joseph, of what he was willing to do. Again, he could have used option number one. For any of you that have had to start over, for any of you that have had a relationship that has fallen apart and you've had to restart it, whether it's a business, some sort of professional relationship, or whether it's it's one in your private life. You can identify with Joseph. And, the, and the, fact, the fact that God spoke to him during a dream would indicate he fell asleep. If you've ever had to start over again, you know how hard it is to fall asleep. And so finally, he drifts off to sleep, and then the angel comes and visits him. The angel gave him a third option, an option that from, again, historians and other accounts of this, we, we don't know if this ever happening, this option number three. Option number three is stay the course. Option number three is marry her. Option number three is to name him Jesus. So sages and uh, folks in the Middle Ages who, um, who would dream about this and would imagine uh, what this would be like for Joseph, for theologians that have uh, really gone down deep into what is happening with, uh, with Joseph himself. They have come up with some, a really interesting way of, of imagining this, and that uh, what Matthew has recorded for us uh, is not nearly enough to move the human heart to do what he did with option number three. Uh, what, what's written here isn't enough. It's not. Uh, that an angel shows up and says, you don't be afraid, take Mary. Uh, the child is from the Holy Spirit. She'll bear a son. You're to name him Jesus. Uh, and he will save uh, people from their sins. And he woke up and said, oh, that's a good idea, right? Uh, there, there is a series, a repetition of many revelations, of many dreams, of many times Joseph encountering this angel and this angel telling him, God needs you to do this. God needs you to do this. And one of the most radical things about this message is that it shows a shift in what we would say systematic theology through the Old Testament into the New. Because the Old Testament isn't written with a God who's vulnerable and a God who looks at, at people and say, look, I need you to do this for me. Look, I, I, I have nobody else I can turn to. I need, I need your help here. We don't hear that voice in the Old Testament. I, I think it exists, but we don't hear it until the New Testament. When the angel, and one of the images of the angel that I love, uh, of, of the angel speaking to Joseph while he's sleeping, is that the angel is kneeling on the side of Joseph's bed, kneeling, pleading. I, I can't 
have you do option one. I can't have you do option two. I, I need you to marry her. I need you to raise this child, and I need you to name him Jesus. God needs you to do this. God's depending on you to do this. And that, I think, is what moved Joseph's heart, is to hear that God needed him. From this point forward, every time Joseph uh, is in some sort of communal area and there's uh, a family around and he introduces Jesus, he says his name is Jesus, and they would look at him like, isn't this your son? Why didn't you name him Joseph? And Joseph would either say, that's a really long story. <laughs> you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Uh, or, um, or I need to take some shame on me and my family. It's because the child isn't mine. To which the rest of the community would go, what? What do you mean it's not, right? This, this whole idea. So imagine how many things that Joseph was invited to. Imagine how many business lunches he was invited to. Imagine the community that he was shunned from because he chose option number three because God said, I need you to do this. And, and that's not all I think the angel told him. I think there's more. I think the angel told Joseph do you remember the story about Moses and how all the Hebrew children being born, all the males were being killed? That spirit of evil is coming back. So I need you, when this child is born, I need you to run. I need you to hide. How's your passport? How's your Coptic? How are you, how are you at reading hieroglyphics? Because I'm going to send you to Egypt where nobody can find you. That's a part of the message. Not only are you going to do this, you need to run. Uh, and God's saying, I'll be with you, I'll help you, you know, I'll set up business for you, whatever it is. And then I will give you a signal when it's time for you to come back. And you can never, ever come back to Bethlehem. When you leave Bethlehem, knock the dust off your feet and do not look back. You can never return to your hometown. I'm going to send you to Nazareth. And Joseph thinking about it, the angel saying, God needs you to do this. And he did. So with Matthew himself, I, I mentioned there's four Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, Matthew was, uh, according to church history, is a tax collector. Uh, so go ahead and boo. He's a tax collector. Right, not a real popular guy, not like uh, a civil engineer that everybody would like. Uh, he was in Capernaum, he had his business, he had everything going for him. Jesus showed up in Capernaum, started talking and preaching. Something started to move in Matthew's heart, and then God went and sat down at Matthew's table, looked across the table from him, and said, God needs you to do something. I need you to follow me. I need you to be one of the greatest evangelists the world has ever seen. God needs you to do this. And he did. Surprising, shocking uh, that he did, but he did. Forever carrying the label of tax collector, forever following uh, the crucified Christ, he's, because God said, I need you to do this. So there is no way that Matthew knew Joseph. Uh, the last we heard of Joseph, Jesus was 12 years old. And let's say at the very youngest, Jesus is 33 when he's out doing these things. Uh, and, and, and the story of Jesus being uh, processed off to the skull where he's going to be crucified, if Joseph was alive, it would have been a different ending. There would have been something else happening along that route. Uh, Joseph wasn't. He had passed away somewhere along the route. So it's uh, most likely when Jesus was 12. So Matthew is only hearing about this story, but from whom? Who told Matthew about the story? So if we can take a walk out onto a theological limb for a second. I mentioned there's four Gospels. Uh, there are four canonized or canonical Gospels that are included in the Bible. There's 127 written at last count. One of them has to do with Jesus' infancy and his birth. And it has to do with what his relationship with Joseph was like when he was a tween, <laughs> all right? When he was in middle school. Anyone know what that? Okay, so those stories are, are amazing. They didn't get canonized in the Bible, but one of, and, and Jesus was working on this power 
was trying to understand who he was and knew that he was different. There's a story about one lake that he picked up all the water and he put the water in a different lake and that uh, owner over here that needed that water for his cows came and told Joseph, I'm going to sue you unless your son returns the water. <laughs> and so he's like, Jesus. And so <laughs> put it back. And there's another story about a son that Jesus got really angry with and injured him and then that dad's father shows up at Joseph's house and knocks on the door and says, your son injured my son, I'm going to injure yours. <laughs> Joseph sat down with Jesus, according to this story, and said, look, you're going to have to act like I'm your dad. You're going to have to follow what I do. I need you to do this, Jesus. I need you to act like you're my son. And so it seems as if Jesus told that story. It can be conjectured that Jesus told that story of what Joseph did for him and passed it on to Matthew when he said, Matthew, follow me. God needs you. I need you to do this. It makes sense that that follows. From this point forward, Jesus will tell people that he needs them. Do you remember when he's going to process into, um, into Jerusalem? And he said, I need a colt. Go and find, there's a guy who has a colt. Go and tell him the master needs it, right? Uh, I need that. Then when he's getting ready for the last supper, he's like, there's a guy that's carrying water, a big jug on his shoulder. Go tell him I need his room. Tell him I need it. Tell him the master needs it and passes along. Jesus lifts up the bread and breaks it and says, I need you to do this. And I need you to continue doing this. I need you to keep breaking the bread. And I need you to keep praying for one another. And at the end of it, as he's ascending into heaven, he said, I need you to go baptize in my name to the entire world. Continue what you've learned. I need you to do this. All because Joseph and the angel awoke and he did as the angel said. He took her as his wife. He named him Jesus. God needs you. God has put this whole thing together with us in need. He needs us to pray. I don't understand why and why God can understand and just do it, but God needs us to pray. He asks us to pray. God needs us to continue breaking the bread from generation to generation. God needs people to set up the altar and then especially clean it up once we're done. God needs that. God needs us to be in fellowship and in peace with one another. And one way we do that is through coffee hour. And then God lays it on our heart. I need you to do this. God needs you. And, and the excuses that Ahaz was giving to God about, well, I, I'm not going to ask, you know, I'm an old man. I can't ask God for a sign. Mm -mm. God needs you now. God needs you serving. God needs you passing peace and helping one another. God needs you. And so on this fourth Sunday of Advent, when we remember Joseph, and we remember of the various options that he had that God said, I need you to do an option nobody's ever heard of before. God is asking us to do things for him. So no matter where you are, no matter how old or how far, God is calling on all of us. And God needs us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
turning to page five in your bulletin. Together, let us say the words for our faith found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We will believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Dabney and Doug, our bishops. For Moises, the bishop of the Dominican Republic. And for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray on behalf of all whose needs of body, soul, and mind are great. Especially we lift before you the needs of Downs the Fourth, Holden, Brian, Tyler, Barbara, Anne, and Victoria. Grant healing and recovery for Judy, Nancy, Georgiana, and Alan. Give peace and strength for those going through cancer treatments, especially Dee, Margaret, Bill, Downs the Third, Victoria, Alex, Connie, and Douglas. Visit and comfort all who are under the care of skilled nursing, especially Timothy, Barbara, Kim, and Mary Ann. Be near to all who are in hospice care. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your, your name, name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. 
who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So please be seated. So as a point of personal privilege, uh, I had my ears checked out on Friday um, because I can't hear very well. And it turns out there's a tube that runs down each side and that apparently can become infected. And so right now it sounds like this. <laughs> it's the air, I don't know what it is. Uh, and so, uh, and I feel like I've got a swimming pool around me. Um, I have no fever. I have, I mean, all my glands, everything are all like swollen and stuff, but I'm, did I need to share that? I'm just talking to my doctor right here. That's just, so, <laughs> so Dr. Ortiz, this is, these are my conditions. So they put me on Claritin. It makes me sleepy and loopy. So, yeah. No, it's in the book. All right. Yeah. Sleepy and loopy. Welcome to old. Okay. So, uh, so if, if you say something and I don't hear it, uh, and the doctor said to get me to the urgent care, he said, make sure to tell him it's painful. And I said, well, it doesn't hurt. And they said, really? And I said, well, <laughs> it's painful to have to have Christy repeat things. So, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go. <laughs> so it's really, really painful. It's a 10 on uh, that scale. So, uh, <laughs> so just if you mention something to me, just make sure that we make eye contact so I can hear it. All right. I have a letter that is from Feeding Little Sorry, sorry, Feeding Empty Little Tummies, called Felt Inc. And if you're not familiar with them, our outreach group is. And they say, thank you for your donation of $2,000. Your continued generosity enables Feeding Empty Little Tummies to provide over 300,000 meals a year to hungry children. With your encouragement and support, we hope to exceed our goal and continue with our mission to feed homeless and food insecure children in Manatee County, one backpack at a time. So we got a nice letter from them, and that's, that's here. So yes, outreach. I saw Elaine clapping. That's very good. If you're part of the tidings, you've seen the mountain of, uh, of gifts that we have given to children in our area as well. Um, $5,000 has been donated um, to Turning Points in uh, Bradenton, which are helping people stay in their homes instead of being evicted during Christmas. And so uh, all of the contributions you are doing are amazing, and we are helping those in need, just as God said, I need you to do this for me. Um, another thing that God said, I need you to do this to me, and, and God placed this on Lynn's heart, is that here is the family that we will be supporting with our new to you art sale. Uh, they're getting a brand new home after living in termite infested and other bad places in this area. They are finally getting their own new home, and so we will be supporting them. You'll see all the information on the gallery table. You will hear more about that as we go. Um, Oh, and then, look, a box of Kleenex, so, <laughs> because this is just, <laughs> just so sweet. Anyway, um, I just love what we're doing. And so, anyway, I get to do that. And um, so, uh, the contributions you do and all the things that you are doing to bless this parish, we are blessing others. And I, I just give you thanks, especially during this time of year and this season. It's rough for many. So, thank you for continuing to give. Uh, this week is um, a pretty relatively easy, right? 
There's not, oh, there is a lot going on this week. So uh, we have discussion group on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, the reading is about Christmas. Uh, it's about the crying Messiah, Jesus who cries um, as in a baby. And so those readings, if you're interested in reading them, they're on the gallery table. If you're interested in discussing them, uh, the men's group is Tuesday at 10 a.m., both in person and online. And then Wednesday is our women's group, both in person and online. And speaking of online people, uh, hello. We have a good faithful group, uh, 15, 20 or so, that follow us live on YouTube. Uh, we will get close to 100 views of this uh, of the service today, but some of you, 20% of you, whatever, are watching live right now. Uh, Scott Wusthoff is our host of our Zoom, and Zoom is also running live. Scott would love to have you go to our webpage, All Angels. Uh, lbk.org, click on the Zoom link, and you will meet Scott and, uh, and Linda and uh, Ginger and, uh, and everybody else who's there. And so uh, for those that are watching live right now, you're welcome to jump back and forth. Um, now, I'm going to talk about things that are not available to you, and that is we have a fantastic uh, coffee hour coming up right after the service. So uh, thank you to Bob. Thank you to Donna for doing this. Thank you. Um, so if you're interested, uh, when you leave the, the church, head to your left, and you will be in our coffee hour. Uh, also, we have name tags that you have signed up. A lot of you have signed up for name tags, and name tags are available uh, out there. Um, and... Uh, not to put her on the spot, so I won't. We've been praying for somebody who, for her to recover, and she is in the, in the church with us today, and so I'm very pleased. Welcome. I'm glad to see you. Um, another person that I personally have been praying for, wait, you, had to, you said to, oh, I know what it is. Okay, good. Thank you. That's the Holy Spirit tapping me on the shoulder saying, Bob had an announcement for you. Um, so, speaking of coffee hour, and if you read the reflection, we have a giant tree and we have a whole bunch of decorations, angels that need to be decorated. And so uh, once you're done with service today, if you can head over to the parish hall, uh, grab an angel and put the angel on the tree, that would help us decorate it. So, uh, and then you can get some wonderful refreshments too. So, uh, hi, Kathy. Welcome. Before I get to you, I'm going to do birthdays and anniversaries. I'm just, I'm just glad that you're here. Thank so, you. um, good. Excellent. Um, Christy and I have a son. His name is Ethan. You've seen him up here. You don't see him here today. He's in Orlando. Uh, yesterday, he turned 20. So, yeah. I think, I don't know if he's on. He will be on sometime. Happy birthday, Ethan. 20. <laughs> no wonder I can't hear, right? I'm, I'm feeling loopy. Uh, are there any, oh, and then David Bishop, who's at our 8 o'clock service, his birthday falls on December 25th. It's nice that he shares it with Jesus. That's a, that's a good thing. So uh, any other birthdays this week? Any anniversaries this week? Hello, Pam. Hello, Graham. Hey. You raised your hand when you mentioned anniversaries. Right. 58. 58. Congratulations. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a hard question. Uh -huh. When is the day? But uh, today. And it's today? Today, yeah. Today's your anniversary, yeah, 58 yeah. years. Yeah. Right. And so where did you all get married? In um, Sydney, Australia. Okay. And what type of church? Or was it in a courthouse? Presbyterian or? church. Presbyterian. St. David's Presbyterian church. <laughs> oh, that's church. a good name, St. Yeah, David's. Yeah, David's. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that's excellent. And 58 years later, here you are in Longboat. That's right. <laughs> Any other plans for today other than heading to church? What's our plan? <laughs> We're going out later on oh, for good. dinner tonight. Yeah. Early dinner. Early dinner. At the shore. Very yeah. good. Excellent. All right. So, Graham, if I could, I'm, it's, I, I don't know many Presbyterian blessings. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> I'm going to do my best, though. Okay. Put your hand there. Thank you. Do Presbyterians use in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. So we're we're part of that. <laughs> we're a part of that. Okay. Good. Nice. <laughs> I often forget I'm actually leading a church service when I do this. All right, so let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for sending us Jesus, and we thank you that he showed us the way of love and life. And the first miracle he performed was at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, where he turned water into wine. Lord, he shows that we can turn our hearts to you and to one another. Lord, we thank you for this union. We thank you that 58 years ago, they made a promise and a commitment that this world so desperately needs to see. And I ask that you strengthen them, bless them, and help them to have a house and homes that are always open to those in need, and especially to those who need to see love. Lord, give them your joy. 
And this we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may kiss the bride. Do you want to follow that? Sure. <laughs> so, hi, Kathy. Welcome back. Thank you. So you went to Antarctica? Yes, I did. And unfortunately, I was sick on the ship the whole two weeks. So I got to see the Falklands in South Georgia. And by the time we made Antarctica, I didn't even leave the cabin. So anyway, you cannot imagine how happy I am to be home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. And while you were there, there was a ship that got hit by a railway. Yes. Wave, and that was not your ship. That was not our ship. We were on a small French ship, Ponant. Okay. Uh, cruise line, okay. and it was actually wonderful. The few meals I did eat were delicious, very French, <laughs> and I lost weight, eight pounds. That tells you how sick I was. <laughs> anyway, I am delighted to be here with y'all, and I am so glad you've joined us today. I encourage you to come to coffee hour. We'd love to see you there and visit with you. And does anybody have a guest they'd like to introduce today? I think we're good. We're good. Yeah, thank okay. you. Wonderful. Thank you. thank you so much. Excellent. Sure, Carol. All right. Speaking of socializing with our fellow parishioners, um, I spent some time yesterday organizing our 31 people who have signed up for the January dining club session, and I'm going to put those sign up. The, I'm going to put the assignment sheets. Assignment. That sounds so serious. I am going to be putting those assignment sheets out on the end of the gallery table. Now, in February, we'll have another batch of hosts, and we'll mix it up so that you meet some new people and have some new conversations. And if you want to sign up for future months, we're going to do it again in February and in March. Just let me know, and we can certainly expand that roster. But thank you for those of you who have signed up. It's a lot of fun, nice way to get to know these faces on a personal basis, know their stories, uh, break bread together. You can do it at the host's home. You can go out to lunch together at a restaurant. You can go to dinner together. You can go potluck. You can go over the top as far as your gourmet skills, however you want to do it. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Carol. And thank you for doing it. In case you haven't heard this, the Lord needs you to do this. So, I'm, uh, yes, amen, yes. Good. Speaking of things the Lord needs, um, so this Thursday at 7 p.m., we are having our blue Christmas service. And some of you, some people have said, but I'm not feeling particularly blue this Christmas season. Um, well, I, I need you to show up. Uh, we need folks to, to populate and to be there, especially for those um, who are grieving. It's good to see others uh, supporting and being around them. It's at 7 p.m. It is an evening prayer Compline service. We have amazing music, David. We do? Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad you're a few words this morning. That's why. <laughs> yes. We have amazing music on uh, Blue Christmas, uh, including our very own Carolyn Suda, I believe. Yes, excellent. Good. And you're bringing in a soloist as well. Oh, she passed. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So the um, soprano, who's a coloratura, who will be here on Thursday evening with us, just buried her mother on Friday. So, I'm fortunate to have her coming, and she thinks it's going to be a very good healing experience for her so. uh, to try to get over the grief of losing a young mother too, only 64. So, wow. it's been a tough time, and it's a gorgeous voice. So you're in early. Okay. You'll be treated well. And she has a 10 month old too. She's a 10 month old also. Wow. Yep. That's excellent. A lot well, going on. Thank you. So we'll see you Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, and then Christmas Eve is at 5 p.m. here on Saturday night. And uh, more fabulous music. I shouldn't take the mic away. But yes, so uh, we have more on Christmas Eve. Then Christmas Day, we have one service at 10 a.m. And yes or no, will you see me at that service? No, I, I will be at home uh, with the boys and opening gifts uh, on Christmas Day, that Sunday service. Uh, the Reverend Nancy, uh, Reverend Canon Nancy Deming, will be celebrating and preaching on that Sunday. So, uh, you'll see me on Christmas Eve, of course. I'll be here for then. And then the following Sunday is uh, the first of January, and we are having a, uh, a service and. I'll be there for that one. So I'll see you at 10 a.m. Uh, the following Sunday. So 
um, Blue Christmas Thursday, 7 p.m., and then Christmas Eve at 5 p.m. Um, we're going to have more of our neighbors and friends coming in at 5, so it'll be a wonderful celebration. Are there any other announcements for the good of the cause? Did I capture everything? Okay, very good. So for communion today, uh, we will have um, two different communion stations. I'll be here, and uh, no, actually I won't. I'm going to have both of my uh, other reverends here, and they will be passing out the bread. If you'd like to receive the bread, put your hands together like this. You then can eat it and head back to your seat, or you can head over to where we have a bowl, and if you hand your wafer to this person, they will uh, intinct it, they will dip it, and then hand it back to you. Um, so you can either receive it with wine or without. We believe the body of Christ cannot be divided. So if you receive in bread alone, you've received uh, in all types. So uh, just know that you're welcome. If you'd prefer to have a blessing, put your arms together like this, and you will receive a blessing. Just know that God is calling all of us to meet God here. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and had their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see our hand at work in the world about us. Bring us to your table for solace and for strength, for pardon and for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may serve the world in his name. Risen, Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Turning to page nine in your bulletin. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and all those you love forevermore. Amen. Amen.